Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam SubhanAllah, this heart of ours is so powerful as you mentioned but what happens when we keep having heartbreak? You know the <coughs> raw skin has a strength but scar tissue is actually stronger. So people who have very soft hands like they never worked a day in their life, they get cut very easy. But the hand that is cracked and torn – oh the fireworks went off still. <laughs> I don't know with 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 the the, fire, the hands and fireworks had to go up, but <laughs> means that anything that's cut, when the scar comes back, much more stronger. So, the heart is no different. The heart that's broken comes back stronger each time, and there has to be immense amount of heartbreak, immense amount of testings. This is not the, the way of the, the cotton people that they walk with cotton slippers and want to be pampered with cotton slippers. This is the way of warriors whether they're female men, they're spiritual warriors whom wish to fight shaitan so that they can reach Rahman. So definitely there's going to be heartbreak because uh, the heart doesn't even know what it's supposed to love. It tries to love everybody on earth and tries to find relationships to suffice its capacity as if they're divine relationships. And it's not true because the heart is only supposed to love Allah and Muhammadun Rasulullah Everything else put into your liver, in your jigar. So means even the correct understanding of love is not known until their training and they understood the tariqah teachings. So the heart has to be for Allah has to be for Sayyidina Muhammad and that's the primary and the most powerful focus. When the individual directs themselves to that true and to that eternal love Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They get what they need from Allah they get what they need from Prophet Everyone else doesn't matter because everybody will love you in the capacity that they have. But if you're suffice and Allah is sufficient for you, you don't need anything else. So then you accept everybody at the capacity that they have to give. But when people of dunya don't understand that, they want everything from another individual as if they're Allah or as if they're Sayyidina Muhammad and there's nothing like unto that. So that's why then heartbreak, heartbreak, people go around giving their heart to the wrong people and for the wrong understanding and the heart belongs only to La ilaha illallah. Ma fi qalbi dhikrullah nur Muhammadun sallallahu. That's it, ma fi qalbi. There's nothing that can come to the heart of the one whom gave their heart to Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad means that every test that comes to 
defile them, efface them, betray them, it's just, mm, their gut hurts, they're another rotten person in their betrayal. But their heart was for Allah and He keeps them to be secure and solid, that they're not flipping around and falling apart. This is what's needed in, in days of difficulty is to keep our best and the compass in its best way to be directed and locked onto Divinely love and Divinely praise and under the love and nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and everybody else to the capacity and to the limit that they have inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi as students, what should be our approach towards current and future technologies which curtails our heart's potential like AI, Neuralink and humanoid robots? Please forgive my bad adab. Yeah, you follow the example of your shaykh. <clears throat> so the purpose of a shaykh is to follow what they do, how they do to the best of our abilities. That's why Allah sends for us living guides. Means that it's not a philosophy and it's not something somebody has to figure on their own. Say so that if I have a phone, we, we discussed this last night, if you're going to use your phone only for your entertainment then sit and think, well you know my shaykh doesn't do that. So my mom would say, oh you seem to be on your phone a lot like I'm uh, sitting and entertaining myself. I said, no, there's three charities and people from all around the world that have to be replied to and commented on through via my phone we run everything. And then people started to help and make comments, you know how difficult it is to go through 500 comments on a YouTube video and there's 2000 of them. But mashaAllah there are people now coming in, going and making the comments, making the replies. But your example is that what does my shaykh do? He uses them for da'wah. So if a portion of your life you use in Allah's way, the other portion of your life then has a meaning. So everybody comes and says, oh for a wedding and for my children's weddings, oh I've saved up a lot of money and I'm going to do all these wonderful things. And for myself, I'm all saving, saving, saving because I'm going to buy a big house, I'm going to take care of myself, I'm going to do all these things. But tariqah is not like that. That before you buy house for yourself you have to have bought a house for Allah Before you bought clothes for yourself and a wedding for your family and to honour yourself and raise your honour and status amongst people's eyes, you should have made a mawlid and celebrated the birth of Prophet in a grand way. So that anytime you make an event with Allah said, I did my best for Prophet first and always first. Then for myself, alhamdulillah, whatever I can do. So the way that our shaykhs taught us was always putting Allah first. Even Mawlana Shaykh would say that you, you have an interview for a job and you quickly go out and buy a suit. But for the sunnah you wear something 20 years old and shabby. But if somebody tells you they're going to give you some money, that's why you're going for an interview, you buy the best suit is forbidden. You have to buy that suit and sit in the zikr and you first wear that suit for Allah And if you're ashamed to wear that for Allah then you don't need to buy it for your dunya. Means our suits are, are modified and beautific and look very western like a three-piece suit. But Mawlana Shaykh's teaching for ourselves was that try to live your life for them first and then we can understand what it means to love Prophet and then more than we love ourselves. That did we do our best for that reality, for my faith 
for all my actions, that will be the legacy I leave my children. The technology that came out, did I do something for the betterment? And we said, now nah, look, who, who's, who's benefiting from the AI? Do you think I'm re researching every night what my notes are? Let me go on my own AI and see what my own answer comes back to me for? No, but it will be the legacy I leave behind on this earth. If tomorrow I go, my legacy is left. For the people whom are enjoying it 24 hours a day. So it means our life is about what we're going to do for Allah because it's right here. And what I'm going to do if I have to meet Him tomorrow. And if we did those things, then everything else that we do for ourselves and our families, alhamdulillah. You bought a car for your children, great. But did you do anything for Prophet So everything we do. You know when we, when we came into these areas they would have parties for their friends, beautific setups. And if an event was for Allah they put it in a troth. They put a table with very dirty tins and put some foods and here you go like cattle coming to eat in a line. Why you would serve like that for Allah? But for your friends you bring out the best of your china, what's, what's wrong with you? Why you do like that? Because our teaching was, oh no, if you're going to bring and, and serve for Allah put the best that you have. And so our people would come with very beautiful shaping, professional uh, cutlery and, and service sets to show why. We're honouring people for the sake of Allah and this is the way we want to be treated. And if we're going to do these things privately, this is what we should be doing for Allah first. So it's a, it's a whole mindset. So if we use the technology in the correct way for Allah then we know that we're, we're being blessed by all of the actions. That's why we say, at least take your finger and share the links. If all day long you're just sharing videos and social media with your friends, it didn't occur to you once just let me give a half hour for the tariqah and start sharing videos, start sharing the charity, start sharing the items from SMC. So alhamdulillah it leads a balanced life and it's very commonsensical, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Sayyidi from the levels of the heart how does one know that he has made progress on a level? By your connection means that you read the level, you read the section on the Qab, start to read, start to meditate. Everything again is like the, these codings and encryptions, everything you read its encryption unlocks with the tafakkur. So you could be gaining knowledge but if you're not connecting the true download is not taking place, the conveyance of energies are not taking place because we said before and many times the knowledges are encrypted. You know you can think you have the coins because you understood it, you read it but unless you did the tafakkur the code won't come into your wallet, means that it doesn't get burned into the heart until I'm doing my meditation, I'm connecting and now I'm understanding. Not only I understood through my mind but my heart because that's just ilmu yaqeen. I had to open. So the connection, no connection you get cut. <laughs> So re reading alhamdulillah is just one step. So we read the, the text, we read the knowledges, that's ilmu yaqeen. But the ilmu yaqeen has to open because we're trying to open the sirr and the secret. And these are three formulas that open that reality. So the knowledge of realities has to be mixed with the vision of reality and opening the heart, making the connection. Then the true downloading of this information occurs within the heart of the servant. As a result they begin to witness, 
when they witness it's a truth for them. They witness the color, they witness the realities, they witness the fires, the energies, the connection with the shaykh so that the truth and the knowledges become a truth for them. Otherwise it's just something they read. It could be very nice reading but it has to be through the witnessing of the heart inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, related to all this technology and our children, recently a 12 year old boy in BC committed suicide in a sextortion case. Do you have any advice for our youth and using apps like Snapchat on social media? Yeah, you have to sort of have open conversations with your children on not uh, sending any parts of their body and images of their, their selves and not to be lured into uh, different circumstances. Whatever the adults understand you have to explain it to a level of a child to understand. We know the dangers of being lured on the phone, you know that somebody could send something and say that this is their image and I really like you, send images of me of you now. And you say, no, don't believe that because that's not really the image of that person and that could be somebody even a, your guy friends just trying to lure you and trap you. So the general rule is don't send anything, don't send images of yourself, don't put your address and locations because not only the, the self-harm and, and being harassed but people being lured through video games, through mobile phones, through everything. Come to this location, come here, do this. And just the immense, immense danger of, of this uh, environment that's opening. And again we said that uh, immense blessings of the tariqah and the reality of the ta'weez. Now people don't understand it because they don't have that level of faith. But when you have the humility to wear the ta'weez and the children to wear the ta'weez Alhamdulillah from our belief and from the teachings of the shaykhs that you fall off the radar of shayateen. And in this day and age this can be an immense blessing because if the shaitans pick up on their radar that they want somebody, they hunt for somebody, they hunt for people. They target them at schools, at malls and shopping centers and they go out and try to steal them. So it, it's a very difficult time where we are like the prey where shaitans are hunting and the humans seem to be the, the prey that are being hunted. So part of our defense and our spiritual uh, practices are the ta'weez and the ta'weez on the homes, the cars, the, on the persons. And if the people who don't like it go to the AI and you know and, and neg negotiate with the AI and he will teach you. The imp immense importance of that and those whom have faith become like a hot coal that you know don't care what people say, this works for me and you keep your faith to yourself and your practices for yourself and your family and alhamdulillah. But uh, you know the overwhelming uh, negativity of other people that stop people from trying to believe and to do the practices that are required for their belief. So that's why then you know the ta'weezes are available, ta'weezes for the body, the car, the house and everything because there's an immense spiritual battle taking place and people to be vigilant over everything in their lives. And we've had talks about that, that you know people are being hunted and a great blessing from Allah with this love of Prophet is just to stay off of the radar of shayateen. You know much of the blessings in your life are what you don't know, not the, the near accidents you think you saw, oh Shaykh MashaAllah oh, I almost got hit by a car. That's the problem you saw but what about the thousand things Allah kept away from you? That you didn't see but that requires faith that, Ya Rabbi I know how much you protect me for I'm walking through the valley of death and I know that you're with me, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Rabbullah Sayyidi, can formal meditation be done by an individual 
who cannot keep their wudu due to sickness? Allah knows best what the, He's put upon His servants and you, you keep the wudu to the best of your ability and the, the rest is in Allah's hands. So there are, there are other ways that you know if, if somebody can't keep the, the full wudu they take the more or clean sand from the beach that animal didn't uh, impurify. So you find a place of clean soil, we use the more that the Ahlul Bayt blood is mixed with it, that these are clean soil when you keep it like a bar of soap on you. And as soon as you feel that you're losing your wudu then you make tayammum and immediately continue with your practice. Or you put in a Tupperware clean sand. So tayammum is not the mud of your backyard but you have to find clean sand because it's the dust. So as soon as you touch it and touch it you can make and the dust takes away the negativities and the fires of shayateen. So alhamdulillah Allah make it easy for us. The concept that people worry about is, oh I'm not clean I can't do it but that's when you choose not to be clean. But if Allah gives a servant a sickness and a test that's not an excuse now not to pray and do anything anymore but to do it with an understanding that I do to the best of my ability and Allah you know what you have tested me with and it's actually your soul in ibadah not your physicality. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi if we have a strong love towards awliya for example like Khawaja Muhyiddin Chishti how do we connect through our shaykhs? Thank you for all the love and support. The hikmah and the understanding that not all shaykhs are shaykhs that can be connected with. So you sit to learn from this reality because these shaykhs that teach this are at a level that their soul is very powerful. If you take this understanding and say, so now I want to sit down and connect with so and so. If they didn't teach that mode of communication then you're not supposed to be using it with them. Had they wanted that level of communication they would have taught it. So we can't speak to other people but if Allah gives you like a shaykh is like a payphone that I'm going to go to that shaykh and make the call and make the connection. As a result with my connection to this shaykh I can build that connection with the shaykh, ask him to dress me, bless me and that with your connection take us to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad take us to the presence of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jailani Siru. But you have to make a means through the shaykh that is amongst you and whom you're listening and learning from because of your safety. So when you connect with the shaykh that you're able to communicate with, you're able to read from the articles, you're able to attend his majlis and, and watch the zikrs. If something becomes fishy in your connection, something not right in your connection you can communicate it. That I went, I started to communicate and things started to go wrong, I felt something entered the room, something was asking me to do something like this or that. Immediately you can communicate with the shaykh that you're connecting, the shaykh this is something is happening. The shaykh can say, yeah don't do like that, don't do this, don't do that. But when somebody left to themselves and you enter into the world of hallucinations and imaginations and they're connecting where and to who? And how do they know that they connected to that? So it can't be referenced, it can't be verified 
and it can't be validated and that's a big danger because they don't know who they're connecting with, who they think, think they made a connection with and then they start to go off on different tangents. So the concept of the living shaykh is essential that the living shaykh is right in front of you and he's teaching you, no, no, don't do that. Don't use this connection for your material gain or you know for personal questions you have. This connection is just to ask for light, just to ask for energy into your heart and then to be filled with that energy and asking to enter the presence of Prophet Somebody with themselves with, oh I was thinking of this, then I thought I, I would go live here, then I thought I would buy this, then I would do this and this just only the world of imagination because it can't be calibrated through a living shaykh and that's the, that's the danger, So. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, why do we get so many terrifying nightmares in spite of bedtime prayers and doing all these practices and purity through the day? Like what we said that if we think that our practices scared shaitan and made him run away, we, we've highly underestimated his ability. So this is a battle, it's, it's not you got victory. I, I ordered Taweez now everything in my life ended, I'm, I'm now ready to walk to paradise. No this is a battle, so as soon as you decide, decide that you're going to battle, you're going to develop yourself, you want to build yourself, well shaitan's going to send the, you know, the lower one away and send, send a bigger one. And through every means possible they're going to try to detract and distract the servant. And that's when you know your battle is good, keep going, keep connecting. Don't worry about what they're trying to show and, and the, the energies. And a lot of spiritual realities for servants that open up, that goes into the thousands of things we didn't see what I mentioned earlier. That when you sit in your home. Do you know how many millions of Afrit are outside your door wishing to enter in and completely destroy your home, yourself and your family? This is the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. People don't understand that so it's heedless. We don't know the extent of what Allah is protecting all His believers. Then those whom wish to ascend then shaitans are not happy with that. And as a result more protection are coming, more spiritual beings are coming as a protection to protect servants against difficulties. So many times as we build our spirituality we become even more hyper aware of, my goodness what the heck are all these things, what are all these nasty thoughts, what are all these nasty things being done around me and it's not your desires but it's what's happening on this earth all around you. How many people are being tortured and, and going through difficulty in homes that are adjacent to other people's homes? How much suffering is happening 10 homes that way or 5 or 50 homes that way? So I mean so much is happening within our vicinity heedless to it. And again this is the rahmah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that Allah shields us but at times Difficulties come, difficulties are witnessed, horrific energies are witnessed and this is the battle. This is the battle of spirituality to increase the durood, to play the durood within the house, to have the perfumes and fragrances and throughout the day to have the isfan and the burning and the clearing away of any type of negative energies and that uh, make your zikr and uh, your four falak your three Surat al-Nas, two ikhlas and blow upon yourself before sleeping, inshaAllah sleep with wudu, sleep with your head covered because your greatest battle is once you enter into that uh, state of sleep, shaitans are coming and trying to attack from the outer dimension not into the house. Because if the house is then fortified that as your soul is trying to come out of its physicality then the outside energies are trying to attack and trying to cause mischief and send with their energy upon the soul. So 
Many things are happening, just do the madad, the protections, do all that you can do and keep your firmness on the path inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum Salaam wa Sayyidi, how does one get out of the feeling as though all knowledges and the flow has stopped if God forbid that happens? How to get out of the feeling? I don't know. The knowledges haven't stopped and you're listening to them now. So I don't know what, what that means, the feelings for you have stopped, then keep your connection, build the connection, make the salawats and continue regardless of what you think you feel and don't feel. Because we don't do this for feelings, we don't do the worshipness for feeling, we don't do anything for, for anything in exchange. This is all just a love for Allah love for Prophet You do what you do out of love, if Allah chooses to reward you then rewards you. If he chooses at that time not to send a reward, it's a test, keep doing what you do. Regardless of uh, how you're being compensated from Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So based on your previous talks, does every existent will come back into non-manifestation in the end? Yes. That's what we said that the that that one was the deep part. That when you talk about an akhfa reality, if you look at that flower from Lataif al Qalb, it's just symbolized by these four interlocking circles with the center circle. Means everything that comes out in manifestation came out because it went through annihilation. As a result of annihilating it comes out and exists. That same is the manifestation of birth. You come through the darkness of the womb and Allah describes three levels of darkness. Every day we have three levels of darkness, right? We're from the Maghrib, Isha, Fajr. So every day has a birth. From time of Maghrib becomes dark, Salat al Isha is the the, the apex of darkness and now you have to move through the fajr means the ending of the darkness until the day comes and the birth is given. The day is born and even the child is born, so veiled in three shields of darkness to be born. So everything is born through that falaq and through the akhfa reality. So mahiya dunub is also muhi al qulub. You got it? Muhi, the one giving light, giving life, he revives. Mahi, the one who is coming back because the mahi comes back, you come out into the life. When you come back, what are you coming back with? Sins. So the same one whom is giving you and light and muhi and reviving you on your journey back to him is annihilating, crushing all the sins so that you return back to Allah pure and purified. So when we say muhi al qulub, mahi al dunub, from the same akhfa it's happening. Because you came out muhi and your heart was given a light and from that energy, from that electricity ocean your heart beat and you came into existence. And they saw even now when the cell and the, the, the egg is fertilized they see explosion of light then it goes in. Why? Because this is the muhi al qulub. Who's muhi al qulub? Prophet he has to send a light into the heart of that creation. And when the creation its time ended, he is the one also mahi dunub. He will crush all that's other than what pleasing to Allah because it has to pass through his gate, he's not passing it dirty to Allah 
So the very door that brings this force of life is the only door to return back. So what we have in Surah Yaseen, وَلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ What are the last three verses? قُلْ عَمْرٌ irada. Read the English, Hajj I think from 83 or, oh no, 81, 82, 83 because Surah Yaseen is a description of this haqqaiq. That every amr and order, his will and his order, those last three verses describe the whole reality. And it is not possible for the one who created the heavens and the earth to create the likes of them. It is surely possible, why not? And he is the great creator, the all-knowing of everything. And his only task when he intends a thing is to command it, be, and thereupon happens. Therefore purity is to him in whose hand is the control over all things, and it is towards him that you will be returned. <coughs> This is a description of Prophet Because that one, the verse in the Arabic was what? That we have given all. Later join before that. فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء إليه وإليه ترجعون. Yeah, ladi كل شيء. For all those of us that we have given all, that's all encompassing this malakut to you, and that your authority, كل شيء, is over everything, and to you it will return all this reality. So means everything comes from this gate of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that is the action of life and everything has to go back through the gate of Muhammadun Rasulullah so that all of its residue of dunya and bad actions must be destroyed, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, does the shaykh accompany its students when he enters in the grave for the first time? Yes, we have those talks in the seclusions and I think, yeah, the khalwa, the, the subjects on the khalwa, ask the AI about the khalwa and death. That the bayat and the, the true reality of the bayat to the shaykhs is, is not so much the dunya, that's if you use it to reach towards your, your akhirah realities. But the immensity of accompanying this reality is in the last breath because the, the waqil and the one whom is an attorney over you must be present at your time of death, that as soon as it's written for time of death and notice is given to the soul of the shaykhs to be in attendance. Why? So that the playing of shaitan is stopped, so that he doesn't try to beguile the servant into disbelief. So we said the, the mercy of tariqah is really not known. When Allah really safeguards the servant, He sends them to the tariqahs because if you study the hadith about the pains of death and the process of death, the greatest attack of a servant is at his death where shaitan appears to him and says that you were wrong, denounce what you believe and say, Isa is Rasulullah. And the pain and the thirst of water that overtakes them, shaitan comes and says, I won't relieve this pain until you denounce what you believe and it doesn't stop attacking them. And the tariqahs and the gift that Allah gives of tariqahs is the, this very attack on their last seven breaths 
This is when the strength of the tariqah is like a law firm. Immediately at that time the shaitans don't come because the shaykhs are present. And when the shaykhs are present they safeguard them into the passage of their akhirah and the questioning of the angels. And all their realities, all their dress and everything that they did of action and amal those accounts will be set and those accounts will be presented at that time to safeguard the servant through any difficulties. So the immensity of the tariqah is actually in akhirah. And in the last seven breaths safeguarding our faith, safeguarding what we believed and to fight against the shayateen that are relentless in their attack all the way until the person leaves this dunya, that they don't give up their battle. And that's why distancing ourselves from pious people is distancing ourselves from Allah's mercy. So people whom choose to be distant they're pushing away from Allah's rahmah and mercy. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and nazar and blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad to be upon us, our families and our community. Subhana rabbika rabbal azatami yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surah al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.